this month on the Enough Experiment, I'm really excited to present Dr. Anna Colton. We're going to talk about the challenges of parenting and family life and how easy it is to get into those moments when we're in the supermarket and our toddler is having a wobbly and we leave there feeling completely inadequate as parents. Or maybe we have a riddled relationship with a parent or a sibling. So the family dynamics can be very, very confusing and a minefield for not enoughness. So I want to introduce to you this month's experiment leader, Anna Colton. Anna, tell us a little bit about who you are. Hi there, Mandy. Thanks so much for having me on. I am a um, clinical psychologist, child and adolescent by training, but nowadays I do some pure adolescent psychology and I'm also a very high performance coach working with a lot of West End shows, a lot of performers, leaders in, in all areas um, across the board. So it's a lovely mix. So you're a perfect person to help us how to stop that inner talk about how we suck as parents, how we're inadequate, how family life is bringing up all kinds of stuff for us. So tell us a little bit about this month's experiment. What can we do to get rid of that voice? So that inner critic really affects us and it affects us all. I think we can't escape the inner critic. So acknowledging that it's there and it's there universally is actually quite a good place to start. But for the experiment this month, what I'd love people to do, and we're going to ask people, number one, to change your phone password. We're all very used to putting our thumbprint on or not typing anything in, but to change it and to type in a message to yourself, a message that you find hard to believe, like, I am a good mother. I am a good enough parent, or even just, I'm good enough or I'm enough. It needs to be that mix of not too long, but punchy and something that will require you to think to type it in. And the first few times, you know what, you'll change your password and you'll be frustrated because you'll think your phone's broken when your thumbprint doesn't work. But that's great because it triggers the active process of having to type in the message. And by the time you type in that message 100 times a day for a month, you're going to feel very differently about yourself because it accesses on a more subconscious subliminal message. Um, Access is on a more, sorry, a more subconscious subliminal level. And so we change our belief set in a very different way, a much less active way, and that's great. So that's number one. Then Ooh, we, I love it. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I can see how that works. And it's, it's, um, as, it's, as you said, it requires less intervention. It's not like sitting there with a, a book or a journal. It's just something that we do. And it's amazing that that actually has an impact. And it really does, because you start to, we, we you know, we, we program our minds. And the way we program our mind is by giving ourselves messages. And frequently, particularly around parenting, the messages are, I'm not good enough, I'm a rubbish mother, my sister, brother, friend would do this better, I'm inadequate, my child's had a tantrum, as you mentioned at the beginning, and someone else would have dealt with it so much better than I did, and I got flustered and I got it all wrong. Those are the messages. And we repeat them over and over and over and over, hundreds of times a day without even noticing. So to actively change that message, you have to do something quite different, something that really does step out of alignment. And trying to stand in front of the mirror and tell yourself you're enough doesn't really work. It feels quite uncomfortable. Whereas changing your phone password, we're on our phones all the time. So it's something you just have to do without thinking. And it does change then how we feel about ourselves and how we program our mind. So it's a good one. Great. So I've done that already. I'm, oh, you, said you, you immediately kind of go back and just putting your finger on. Yeah. And, but I love that. So I've, I'm using right now, I am loving, because I think that's a general purpose one for parenting, for anyone yeah. else, or I am love, something like that. Absolutely. And that's a brilliant one. It's nice, but it's short, but it's a really powerful communication and a communication you need to hear. Great. Okay. So that's, that's leg number one. What's the second piece? The second piece is to, particularly with tricky toddlers or teens, and I say both, we notice the bad. So we say, oh, you're not using your cutlery again, or why can't you sit down through a meal, or why are you scowling, or oh, you're always so negative. And we get into this pattern of saying that always, always behave in a way we don't like. But actually what we do is we then seek evidence, and we do it with ourselves as well, that confirms that negative belief, confirmation bias. I, I love a good bit of confirmation bias. Um, so we look for evidence that confirms either about ourselves or about our kids, whatever it is that's irritating us. And we miss any tiny piece and every tiny piece of evidence that actually they've done loads of good things. So the fact that if you've got a younger child that they've even come to the table when you've asked them, for many people is a massive result. But we don't, if we're used to that, we don't notice it. So we just take it for granted. 
So number two is to notice all of the stuff that you either take for granted or that is good that you appreciate and you acknowledge it. Now you don't have to be such sycophantic or say, oh my darling, you know what? You sat at the table marvellous because <laughs> most children will just think you're mad. Teenagers will really want to kind of call the psychiatrist and you will feel uncomfortable. But instead of saying, it took you five minutes to come to the table, you can say, great, you came to the table, thanks. And you pick it up. So you start to pick up the good stuff, the stuff that you take for granted or the stuff that you appreciate. Or, you know, with a teenager who tends to jiggle around, you can say, ah, oh, good sitting through the meal. That's it. That's an acknowledgement. You don't have to go, well done, darling, you're marvellous. No, just, uh, I saw you did that with, with a toddler. Thank you for staying at the table for the whole meal. Nice cutlery use. Good manners. Oh, you chewed that mouth with your mouth shut. Great job. So you just start to be a commentator for the positive stuff. Well, not even the positive stuff, but the non-negative stuff. You start to notice it and commentate on it. Now, all of us, kids particularly, even teenagers and adults, we all want to please. That is how we are programmed. We want to please because that's how we connect with other people. It's how we make relationships. It's how we feel valued. When we get into negative cycles, we forget that, but nonetheless, we still really underneath it all want to please. So when you start to notice and appreciate the things that you take for granted in your children and comment on them, just gently all the time, or as much as you can, the behavior changes. And it, with young kids, it can take 24 to 48 hours. It is amazingly quick as an intervention strategy. With teenagers, it can take a little bit longer because they're usually quite shocked that you're suddenly talking to them in a different way. And it's a bit like, what are you doing? What's mum doing? What's dad doing? This is really weird. But you know, even a grumpy teenager will have a much nicer meal if it goes along the lines of, yeah, glad you enjoyed the meal. Yeah, you know, sat, sat well through that one. Then sit down, sit straight, do this, do that. Why won't you finish? You never eat your food, which we all slip into. So task two, catch and notice everything your child of whatever age does. That isn't negative, that is positive. You've previously, I'm sure, taken it for granted. Now try and notice it and acknowledge it so they know that you've acknowledged it, they know you've appreciated it. And that leads beautifully onto number three, which is to do the same for yourself. Um, and I run them together because it's actually even more challenging to do it for ourselves because we're so attuned to picking up the negative and berating ourselves. Do it for your child and then do it for yourself. And you know what, you'll slip up because you're human. That's okay. Do it as often as you can and really notice how things turn around because they will. Now, the third one is the one that I, I immediately felt myself clench up a little bit because yeah. I'm thinking, well, how do I do that? Do I, obviously we don't say these things out loud. Look at how nicely I sat on the chair today. <laughs> <laughs> but can you make that real for us as parents? What, what could that look like when we're doing this for ourselves? So we're, we're, when we have a negative thought, we actually think, how does, how does that work? Well, you Just have make to it real. it first, but for example, Given the context in which we're discussing this, and let's take mealtime because it's the easiest to discuss this. Let's say that you know you, you start to pick your child up on the stuff that they do that you're appreciating. You can then can say to yourself, I just ignored the bad and appreciated the good. I managed the task. I just did what I set out to do, which was to comment on something I valued. I did it again. I did it three times this meal. I commented on what I appreciated. Yeah, it's better than I expected. When you haven't managed it the whole way through, and that is normal because we're human, I would hate to set people up for kind of a belief that you can just magically turn everything around. But when you slip up, you go, it's a slip. It doesn't mean it's a write-off, it's a slip. Okay, so I slipped, that's fine. I've still done it five times this morning. Mm. Or I created a nicer atmosphere than I have in the past. That's okay. It doesn't have to be I created the perfect atmosphere because one, I hate the word perfect, and two, what is that anyway? But you know, that was a happier meal and I played a part in that. That was a happier interaction and 50% of that was down to me. I didn't berate them. Even if it's, I didn't berate them, I just said nothing. That's a massive step forward. Yeah. So none of this is about the kind of the sickly, uncomfortable, I'm marvelous, I'm wonderful affirmation type stuff that I personally really don't believe and don't like and don't advocate. It's about acknowledging that you are, have done something you wanted to that is less negative than you would have predicted. Mm -hmm. Does, does that make it more real, more easy? It, it makes it 
really real. Thank you. And I think this goes a lot with what the neuroscience of when we reward ourselves after doing something like a small hit. So even in your own head, it could be just like, high five, I did that. Woo. It could be something like that that you don't say out loud because that would be weird. But in your own <laughs> mind, then... <laughs> then what it does is it triggers the reward center, right? It and then we, the we want to do that behavior for ourselves more often. Right, too. right. absolutely. So we're, creating, we're creating like a virtuous circle. I get exactly. it. Exactly, and it's and both, the virtuous and the vicious, they are so easy to slip into. You know, the minute you start that, oh, I'm rubbish, I'm not good enough, I'm useless, we seek evidence that supports it. You see, I knew I was rubbish. You see, I just told them off again. I wasn't loving. I just shouted. And that vicious cycle, we're down the vortex within seconds. The virtuous cycle, actually equally quick. We just have to start it. And that starting it can feel really challenging. Mm. Um, but once you start it, as you say, it triggers, it triggers the neurology. You get the hit of um, the, the, the chemical hit in your brain of endorphins usually the reward center it becomes active it seeks more we we give it more and suddenly we're going back up again and it's so much better mm, everyone wins and yeah. tell people how they can find you so you can find me um my website is www.dranna spelt drana d-r-a-n-n-a dot com dot co uk sorry dr anna dot co uk it is in the process of being redone so the one that you'll get to now is is an old one in a, in a couple of weeks there should be a new one up there's also my instagram and my twitter which are both at dr anna colton c-o-l-t-o-n so they'll both get you to me as well lovely thank you so much for playing You're so and welcome. i cannot me. wait to see how our parenting is going to feel so much lighter at the end me of the too day. i can't wait to hear how it all how it all goes